Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers, joined by John DeShazer. We are two days in to Saints training camp, so obviously we're going to talk about everything that we know about the team so far because all of our questions have been answered. John? Yeah. Um, well, basically, the big thing is everybody is healthy and on the field, although there were a couple of heat-related um, shortened practices today. Uh, one of them being, you know, well, Colin Saunders got uh, got sick and he left early. Mm-hmm. And a couple of heat-related, Keith Kurtwood and I can't remember the other guy. but Shaq Davis. Yeah, Shaq Davis. And so, you know, that's good from a standpoint of having everybody on the field. Um, as DA said, it's a ramp-up period, and hopefully guys will, will feel better, especially they'll get Sunday off and then they'll come back in the pads on Monday, mm-hmm. Tuesday, and Wednesday, I believe, before mm-hmm. being off Thursday. So, you know, you want to get them – acclimated to whatever's going on on the outside. And so you can't get them acclimated unless they're out there. Yeah. I mean, I understand Dennis Allen's point about you have to go through it. I think it adds a certain level of mental toughness to play in these conditions, but they're going to be smart about it. They're going to be indoors some, and they're going to make sure that they're keeping track of players. Players are hydrating and everybody's feeling good. One player though, that did have a slight injury was Trevor Penning. I know the offensive line is something we're looking at. How concerned are we? Uh, I don't know how concerned to be because he said it was a foot injury, but he said it was basically precautionary. It's day-to-day. It's not related to the surgery that he right. had on the foot, which is all good news. But until he gets back out there, there's got to be some concern because it, it is a foot injury. Um, a Liz Frank injury is what ended his seat, well, what he had in the last regular season game mm-hmm. last year, which he took into the offseason and required surgery. So, you know, anytime you're talking about a foot for a big guy, you become concerned until he gets back on the field. Yeah, sure. There have been a lot of other players that have stood out already. I think we've seen some different things from wide receiver Rashid Shahid. He's showing that he's not only just a speedster, but he's moving well, getting out of his routes well. So we'll see how he's used in the offense. You know, Chris Olave said he put on a little bit of weight, and Michael Thomas has been out there for every rep. Well, like Chris Olave, I gained a little weight this offseason, too. <laughs> um, Chris, I, you really can't tell because he says he's seven pounds heavier, um, but he is stronger. Mm-hmm. We've seen him better at the point of attack, attacking the football in terms of contested catches. We saw that in OTAs, and that's one of the few things you can judge in OTAs and mini camp. Uh, the DBs and the receivers get a chance to really get after it. You can't mm-hmm. tell much on the interior, but those guys do get a chance to get after it. We saw him make some contested catches. Uh, Rashid Shahid, you wonder what could have been because he started last year injured and then he comes out and all of a sudden he makes this big splash. He doesn't have the benefit of having Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry on the field with he and Chris Olave. So basically he winds up the season as the number two receiver, I Mm -hmm. guess, behind Chris Olave. But he showed a lot of what he could do. Um, Speed is something you can't teach. And then you put the ball in his hands, he's capable of scoring anywhere on the field. So that's something that the Saints need. That's an element you have to have in the in the NFL, especially if you want to be a good offense that has the possibility and capabilities of scoring fast. I feel like he's going to have so much opportunity this year because if Michael Thomas is healthy the entire season, Chris Olave, those two are going to get the primary looks from the defense. So he is going to be open. Yeah, he's if he's the third receiver and you get him mixed up on a slot cornerback, or maybe you get him out wide, it doesn't really matter. He's going to have some one-on-one situations, and he's probably going to win. Uh, he can run fast, and people back up off him, and so really, he'll have some. He'll have a lot of space, I think, to operate. Uh, because if you want to play press coverage on him, if you can't get your hands on him, he's gone, and that's going to be that. Yeah, they've been working a lot of the running backs into receiving drills as well, getting them the ball. I know that's something that they like to do with Alvin Kamara, but. Seems like they're giving everybody that opportunity. Yeah, the, well, all those guys want to show their versatility. Jamal Williams and Kendra Miller, both of them believe that, you know, at Detroit for, for Jamal and at TCU for Kendra, mm-hmm. that they weren't really used as receivers. They think they have those abilities. And it'll help getting Alvin Kamara more involved in the passing game. He caught, you know, maybe 40 passes or 50 passes last year, whatever it was. 
probably a career low for him after having four straight seasons of 81 catches each. He is a good, a great receiving running back. And they had to stray away from that last year, some because of the injuries, because they needed him to carry a little bit heavier load in the running game. But if he gets back into the receiving mode, then that's just going to make this offense a lot more dangerous. We've seen a little bit of 11-on-11, 7-on-7 work. Anything with the rotations where players are starting that have stood out to you so far? We've been looking at the cornerback situation. Looks like Adebo and Alante Taylor are trading off first-team reps. Peyton Turner has been getting a lot of first team reps at defensive end. Yeah, both of you know those guys are flipping around trying to find out you know who fits and you know uh, you know Dennis Allen said that you know Peyton Turner had earned his reps mm-hmm. you know with the with the number ones on defense so that's a good sign. Um, as far as Adebo and Alante flipping back and forth with the ones, we'll see how that goes. I know again when they were both on the field during OTAs and minicamp, Alante Taylor was in the slot, but. Here's a situation where, you know, if he's going to be competing for that position, then he's going to get ample opportunities and, you know, the best man's going to win. I don't necessarily know if Paulson Adebo can play in the slot. And we're not really sure that Alante can, mm-hmm. but he has worked in it. So, you know, he's got more practice there. And, that, and that's what leads me to believe that when it comes down to it, if it comes down to it, uh, you know, that Alante is going to be in the slot and Adebo is going to be on the corner. I don't know how much it matters because, again, you got to have your best guys out there anyway. But if he fits better in the slot, if you can fit him out there, that allows you to get all of your good corners on the field at the same time starting the game. Has there been a common theme that stood out to you so far in talking to different players? No, I mean, I think the thing that's been the most noticeable so far is the uh, is the turnover. Yeah. Guys, you know, defense has been ripping the ball away, and they're going after it on every play, and that's something that, We've seen before, but it didn't manifest during the games last year. Andrew Dow is running around with a magnet in his pocket or something. The ball finds him when it gets on the ground. He ripped one from Jawan Johnson yesterday, and today he's able to pick up a strip. So the ball finds him, but the defense has been really handsy, and that's a good thing to see from that unit because they weren't able to force those turnovers. And I don't care how good a defense you are. Uh, I think it was Dennis Allen who said it, or maybe Demario Davis, you got to be able to take the ball mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to take the ball away because you're going to turn it over from time to time. But you've got to be able to turn it, you know, turn it back over and capitalize on it. And so far in training camp, we've seen the defense be able to get their hands on the ball. Yeah, 13 takeaways overall for the defense last year is not going to be enough, especially no, for this no, defense. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a huge contributor to being 17 because they played a lot of close mm-hmm. games last year. Maybe a turnover here and there, and instead of being seven and ten, maybe you're nine and eight, or maybe you're eleven and six. And, and so, you know, it's a huge part of the game. They had games where they turned it over and couldn't force a turnover, and that turned out to be the difference. So, hopefully, uh, they're able to kind of swing that the other way. Anyone that's caught your eye? Not really so far. I'm, I'm really looking forward to when they get the pads on. Yeah, I want to see the big guys. I mean, we, For sure. you know, the receivers and the and the, now I will say this: Marshawn Lattimore makes a. a a golden play today. Yes. Uh, against Michael Thomas. Mike Thomas beats him deep. Uh, Mike Thomas makes the catch. It's a diving catch. He comes down with it. But before he can establish possession, Marshawn rips it out. And that's really two great players making a great play. And really, you don't fault Michael Thomas for not being able to hold on to that one because it's going to be a tough catch anyway. And Marshawn has the wherewithal mm-hmm. to be able to strip it out at the last second. That's a phenomenal play, really, I think, from both guys. Uh, so that really stands out from a skill position standpoint. And Derek Carr, you know, he knows what he's doing. You can tell he knows what he's doing. Guys are where they're supposed to be. Uh, Alvin Kamara made a nice cut against Dow mm-hmm. today, man. He, and that, it was one of those where, you know, you look at Dow and you're like, man, I, and then it's like, well, that's Alvin Kamara. That's mm-hmm. why that happened. But for the most part, I'm just looking forward to seeing the big guys because you can't really tell anything until they can get their hands on one another really with pads on and that's not going to happen until Monday. Yeah, I know we're always looking at each other like was that would that have been a sack? Would that yeah, have been that, stopped? Yeah, that's always the thing, you know, you know, guys get there and then they'll swipe in and hey, mm-hmm. I got a sack. Well, was it really a sack? I mean, you know, could he have broken that tackle or would he have stepped up in the pocket or would the guy block you differently if you got pads on? So, I just want to see those guys and and I really want to see Trevor Trevor Penning in his pass because Trevor Penning is a is a cantankerous dude. He mm-hmm. he's feisty. And he doesn't understand how to stop being aggressive 
until maybe somebody pulls him off. So I hope he's healthy enough to be in that. Yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing that. That's next week. You've covered a lot of Saints training camps. Is there anything that's been different with the structure of this one? It definitely seems like there's been shorter practices, being more cognizant of of how much they're running the guys, the wear and tear on their bodies. And then, of course, they've been doing these gassers at the end. Yeah, we're in a in a heat related. I mean, we we're in a heat advisory around. I mean, it's a crisis everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so so you've got to be careful if you're going to practice them outside. I understand Dennis Allen wants to build up that toughness that comes along with working out in the heat and adapting to it. But you got to be smart about it. If two guys didn't finish today, heat related, now you got to make sure these guys are hydrated properly. Uh, they've got to be conditioned to it. And now you're getting into you know, you get into the shells and then you get into the pads and they've got to be ready for that. And the only way you can do it is to be out there in mm-hmm. it. So you've got to be smart about it. Um, they're expending a lot of energy out there. So you got to be really smart and wise about how you're doing, what you're doing. They got the cold trailer out there and guys probably aren't in it as much as they'd like to be, but it's a good way to cool off the big guys. Especially yeah, they're taking lots of breaks for yeah, water and stuff. Yeah. They're taking, yeah. yeah they've got to, they got to be properly hydrated because you don't want to have any kind of, any kind of real issues mm-hmm. to happen out there and they can happen very easily. When you're talking about running around in this kind of heat. Did you see Phil Galliano's son run in special teams drills today? Yeah. And I also saw, and I can't remember her name, but we had an associate out there catching punts. Caught one. And I think, I think for a bet for like 20 bucks and celebrated <laughs> like it was 20,000. So, so, I mean, there's a little bit of fun for everybody to be had in training camp, uh, especially for the peripheral folks for the help and, and for mm-hmm. the associates and, you know, it's a good experience. I believe DA's son was out there today because they took a post-practice picture. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's a, a good way to kind of bond with family, too. Yeah. There's going to be the fans that are coming out soon. So that's going to always add a little more energy juice to the practices. We're looking forward to that. Coming up just after this conversation, we're going to catch up with a new coaching fellow that's here in Leroy Glover. He's a former Saints Hall of Famer. I know somebody that you know well and spend some time with. Yeah, Leroy was one of those guys who back when, you know, defensive tackles didn't really have a whole lot of sacks, he piled them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was really impossible to block and the Saints were fortunate to have him because I think the Raiders had him and released him and the Saints were able to pick him up for next to nothing and uh, really blossomed into a player in New Orleans. So it was great. I know um, he was coaching a little bit last year, and it looks like he has, you know, an, an itch to coach maybe on the NFL level. He's got a lot of wisdom to uh, to dispense on players. So, you know, hopefully those guys he's teaching are learning something, especially on the interior. He'd probably be pretty good tutor for uh, for Brian Brissy as well as uh, Colin Sanders and, and everybody else at defensive tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Last year it was Jari Evans, who was the Bill Walsh Diversity Coaching Fellow. He is now – a member of the coaching staff. So we'll see what happens with Glover. We're going to head to that interview now. Leroy, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. I appreciate it. Welcome back to New Orleans. Thanks for having me. Is it weird being back here on the other side? A little bit. It's just a little surreal when you remember, you know, back to 1997, you get here for the first time. You're a young guy. You don't know too much about the National Football League. And then fast forward to 2023, you're back now as a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of great memories, a lot of good people, a lot of good victories. And so it's all positive, uh, positive emotions and positive feelings going on. You had quite a successful run here in New Orleans in the NFL in general, but you have been coaching a little bit this year. You're the Bill Walsh Diversity Fellow on the coaching staff for training camp. What are you hoping to bring? Well, it's just more bringing and sharing, I think. It's just sharing, you know, your knowledge of the game, your knowledge of, you know, defensive line play with with some of these guys here. You know, it's trying to build relationships with people so they're doing it because they know it's the right thing to do as, as opposed to them doing it because you're telling them to do it. And then lastly, it's just an opportunity to then learn from from coaches like Coach Allen. You know, from coaches like uh, Todd Grantham, the D-line coach, who's just learning from them, picking their brains, and learning more and more about defensive line play. How did this opportunity come up? 
Well, it was a lot of opportunities here. You know, I've done uh, this internship in the past with various other teams. I've coached in the past before. And I thought, what better way to do it than to kind of come back home, if you will, and to do it with the New Orleans Saints. You know, there's a place where I have a vested interest in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a place where I got my start at. And it's kind of one of those deals where you want to try to play it forward a little bit. Hopefully, I can share some of the stuff that I learned along the way with some of our young players here to help them develop. Since you played, you've been coaching in the NFL, you've been coaching the collegiate level, and most recently at the XFL. How is it all different? Wow, people. Mm -hmm. People are different. Oftentimes, different teams have maybe the same defensive play, but a different terminology. You know, so the XFL may call cover two something different as opposed to the Saints, as opposed to the Jets, as opposed to the uh, the, the Buccaneers, hypothetically. And so it's all verbiage. At the end of the day, there's only so many things you can do defensively, offensively, special teams wise. But each and every team and each and every level has a different terminology to those same kind of concepts. Which place has been your favorite and why is it the Saints? Well, the Saints have definitely <laughs> been my favorite for sure, because once again, going back to that vested interest, you know, mm -hmm. I have a vested interest in seeing this team be successful, seeing these players be successful. Obviously, it's mutually beneficial. I know they're going to get a lot from you as the coaching fellow here. But what are you hoping it helps you do after this? Well, number one is just having a better understanding of all things football. You know, D-line play is one thing, but now learning what the linebackers do and then learning how that affects the secondary. You know, we have a term that we use in football. We've used it a long time. Russian coverage has to work together. So the more you can learn about the entire scheme of a defense, I think the better we can be at either defensive line, linebacker, or our secondary because it all works together. The defensive line here has seen the most changes out of any unit on the team. Is it kind of fun to deal with a new group and, and help them figure out things, know the ropes here? Yeah, I think absolutely it's fun. It's challenging because mm -hmm. you're going to go through some different challenges throughout every training camp, throughout every season. You know, different things are going to happen, good, bad, or indifferent throughout the season. But you have to learn, obviously, some discipline about, you know, fundamentals and technique. Uh, you have to learn some, you know, some adversity is going to hit, how you're going to respond to it. You know, can you can you muster up enough guts to, to push through some tough times? And so all of those kind of things you're going to learn throughout a training camp, what your team is made of, how they respond to different situations that are going to occur throughout an NFL season. How often do you lean on your experience when you're talking to some of these players? A little bit of that, but it's more of the experience from a coach, from mm -hmm. a coaching perspective. And, you know, what I've learned as a player is all phenomenal stuff, but now you got to kind of change your mind a little bit to now. It's more X's and O's, and it's more about being a people person. You know, building relationships with guys first is, is critical for me. After you build a relationship with a player, then I believe they'll do anything you ask them to do. Todd Grantham's a new coach here in the defensive line. What can you tell fans about him? Well, he's been around. You know, he knows a lot of football. He's coached uh, at the premier spots in the National Football League. He's coached at the premier spots on the college level. He's coached some phenomenal, phenomenal football players throughout his time uh, on both levels. And so any of that experience that I can pick up is going to be invaluable for, for the development of a young coach as well. Jari Evans was in your position last year. Now he has a spot on the coaching staff. Is that something that, that you would like to see yourself do? Absolutely. I mean, you do this thing to obviously to, to put people in positions to be successful, but you also do it so that people around you, including yourself, can be successful. And so he's kind of set a model for what that looks like, you know, just putting his head down, grinding, doing his job, and it, it showed that it, it paid off for him uh, in the long run. And so that's something that would be very attractive. You were one of the most decorated defensive tackles here with the Saints during your time, 50 sacks and just under 80 starts. So not bad production-wise. How did you do it? It's a good question. Uh, had a lot of good teammates, obviously. That always helps. You know, it's all about the team here. So when you got good players around you, that helps. When you got coaches that can put you in positions to be successful, that helps as well. And then obviously you got to put in the work. You know, whether it's studying tape, you know, uh, what you're doing in the weight room, what you're doing from a conditioning standpoint is critical. And I think probably at the end of the day, from an individual standpoint, one of the most valuable things that you can have is just being a competitor. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to compete, you want to be the best, and you want to put your team in, in positions to be successful. 
you've been nominated for the Pro Football Hall of Fame six times. I mean, I would vote for you. You would definitely, I don't get a vote, but you'd have my vote, obviously. Yeah, thank you. Yes. It's got to be an honor just to be nominated. Correct. Why do you think that you should be a Hall of Famer? Wow, that's a tough question. I mean, um, you know, here's at the end of the day, it ultimately comes down to what other people feel about the body of work you put together in your career. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some phenomenal football players that are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, guys that I have a lot of respect for that, you know, have done remarkable things. And so if I ever get the opportunity to, to, to have that blessing bestowed upon me, that would be an awesome awesome day right there it's one of those deals where i try not to think about it too much because you know just for obvious reasons i don't want to jinx it a little bit but absolutely that's a goal um it'll be a team goal for me it'll be a, a culmination of a lot of good things not only just here with the saints but some of the other teams and some of the other teammates and coaches and organizations mm -hmm. and and front office folks and just all those i think i don't think it's more of an individual thing it's just a culmination of all those things coming together Six Pro Bowl selections, four-time All-Pro recognition. You have the accolades. You're in the Saints Hall of Fame. What are some of your fondest memories playing for the Saints? A lot of sacks, man. Just hitting quarterbacks is mm -hmm. always fun. Playing good defense is always fun. Good team defense, good hard-nosed, tough defense is, is critical for us. You know, what we were able to do as far as, you know, the, the, the times we were able to get to the playoffs and having some of those successes and that, the filling in the locker room after a big win. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that can never be duplicated, that people can't take away from you, those memories, and the people that you did it with. I mean, that's, that's the, those are the most important parts, in my opinion. How about the fans here? How, how, what more can we say about the fans in New Orleans? I mean, one thing that they've done consistently is they showed up. They've showed up and they've showed out. They've had a great time. They've created a great atmosphere for the Saints players and for the Saints organization. They've even made a name for themselves around the National Football League as just being one of the you know, more premier crowd and fan experiences in the National Football League. So very proud of them. Continue your support. Continue to back us and con continue to make a lot of noise. You'll get to be able to be back in the Superdome on the coaching side for a couple preseason games. Are you looking forward to that? Absolutely. I mean, obviously the first preseason – the first preseason game will be against the world champions, and so that's always a lot of fun mm -hmm. to see how we compete against those guys. And, uh, you know, any opportunity you can get to step back into the dome for a Saints football game will be a special one. We've talked a little bit about you as a coach and a player. What do you like outside of the lines? Pretty, pretty low key, man. I mean, I'm a family guy, married, got three kids. The kids are now, you know, I've got my son who's in college. I've got my middle girl who was in college as well. And then I've got our youngest who's a senior. Well, we, I should say, have our youngest who is a senior in high school getting ready to get her in college as well. And so it's been fun. They, they, they keep me young. They keep me excited. And my wife tries to keep them in line. So it's, it's been it's been really fun. I was talking to Tyron Matthew yesterday, and he said that one of his kids just crushed his soul because he said he wants to go into baseball and not football. Your son going to play any sports? My son is six foot ten, so he is obviously a basketball there you player. Go. And my daughters are six foot one and six foot two. They're volleyball players. So we didn't get a football player in the group, but I'm, I'm good with that. Athletes, though. Athletes, no doubt. Where are you living right now? Home for me is in San Diego, California. I was born and raised in San Diego, went to Point Loma High School in San Diego, went to San Diego State mm -hmm. in San Diego, and so my wife and I just decided to make that home. Did you follow the Aztecs NCAA run? I did. I did. That was fun. That was an exciting time. You know, uh, we, we, we rep anything San Diego State in our house, and so we're very proud of, of where they were able to take it this year, and hopefully next year will be bigger and better. So could your son maybe go there? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, you never know. You never know what can happen. That would be that would be on this hit list, I'm sure. We have our first open practice coming up this weekend. Do you remember what it was like the first time you're out at training camp and the fans are there? I mean, they they're crazy. They are rowdy. They are uh, crazy. They love uh, the experience. They love their Saints. Uh, hopefully, they will be uh, well hydrated because it mm -hmm. will be warm and humid. 
But once again, it's just an opportunity for them to just show one that they support us. And then two, we care for them as well. You know, come on out, come check us out, have some fun, bring the kids, bring the neighbors, bring everybody down. Let's make this thing, you know, something special that we all can remember. You've only been here for a couple of days, but any players we should be watching out for? Well, obviously, let's start with the with the with the old dog, Cam. Cam is still rolling, man. He's he's rocking and rolling. He looks good. He's in shape. I mean, that that's always a positive when your leader is the first guy in the building and the first guy doing what he needs to do to be successful. I think uh, Nathaniel Shepard would be a guy that I'm going to keep my eye on. He's a guy that I have some familiarity with. I kind of know what he can do, and so I'm I'm excited to see uh, him play a little bit. Saunders at the nose, big body guy who we were, we're putting. A a lot into who we're expecting a lot out of as well are, are kind of the guys I'll be working with mainly mm-hmm. and so those are the guys who are really going to be you know kind of you know separate themselves hopefully to make this year's Saints defense one of the more memorable Saints defenses. Yeah and we had to shore up the inside of that defensive line so we appreciate you being here helping us out with that. Thank you so much for taking the time and enjoy the rest of training camp. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.